Alrighty guys, welcome back to the harmonic scanning tutorial series. And in this series we're scanning for harmonic patterns in the Forex market. And if you followed along with the last video, what we did is we found some peaks and we plotted them. So this is what we ended up with in the plot from the last video. So we're going to pick up right here where we left off. And the first consideration I want to make and propose as a question to you guys is are we looking into the future to find these peaks? Right? So for instance, say this point right here, this is today, this is where we are. We have no idea what the market is going to do in the future. We don't know that it's about to go up really fast. So we don't know if this point is going to be a minimum or not. So how can we know? Well, we just can't. We, we're, if, this is, if today is all we have, we have to assume that today is a minimum. We can't look into the future and know that it's going to go up and know right away that this is a minimum or that this was a maximum right here, right? Because we could have thought that it was going to keep going and that this, was, this wasn't going to be a maximum, but it turns out to drop. So we need to make sure that we are not looking into the future at all when we're deciding our points. And I know for a fact that this argrel extrema function does look into the future. So how can we avoid that? Well, we can avoid that by only giving argrel extrema the data up to a certain point. So iterating through. So if we iterate through and use the iterator as today's current value, then we should be able to eliminate the problem. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're just going to put it in a loop. So we'll do 4i in range. And let's start at 100 points, OK? So we're going to start at point 100 and look behind us. And we're going to go all the way to the length of Christ. OK, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and put these guys inside of the loop. And so now that we're inside the loop, we need to change this up. So now we're going to be looking at all of the data, all of the data with colon, up to the iterator, so up to i. And the same thing here. All right, so now that we have everything up to i, we should be able to find all the peaks behind us in the iterator, OK? The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the indexes for the peaks also reflect the last value that we're looking at as a peak, right? Because we don't know whether today is going to be a peak or not. So we just have to assume that it is. All right, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to add on to this list here. We're going to add another list, and that's going to be the length of price.values, everything up to the iterator, okay, minus 1. So that is going to be the correct index for the peaks uh, for the last value. Okay, so let's go ahead to see if this is working. Um, let's go ahead and do the plot. And again, we'll change the plot to this. And let's check if this works. Okay, the problem here is we didn't start far ahead enough. So let's go ahead at 500 because we're already starting at 100 here. So we want to make sure we have plenty of points in front of us. OK, so now you can see that the, the program is assuming that this last point is also a peak. OK, so if we keep doing that, you'll see that it's going to keep going until it actually finds a peak. Right? You can see it dropped that other one because it found a better one. So this process is going to continue, and it's going to find all the peaks, right? So now that we have our peaks, what we want to do is figure out what is, if it's a pattern or not. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to call this current index. Actually, no, let's just, let's just leave it as index, OK? And then what we're going to do is, for our Forex patterns, this was like the general setup of the pattern, right? So we know that price goes up, down, up, down, or down, up, down, up. So how is a way that we could figure this out? Well, the first thing we'll notice is that this is a five-point pattern, 
one, two, three, four, five. So we're only concerned with the last five peaks. So let's go ahead and get those peaks. So we're going to do um, IDX, or we'll do current IDX is equal to, and it's going to be the last five indexes. So we do that like this, and then we can get the current pattern. So we'll just get rid of this peaks thing, and we'll do current pattern is equal to index prices indexed by the current index. Okay, so now that we have our price pattern, instead, let's go ahead and plot it. So we're going to do plot instead of scatter, and we'll do our current index and our current pattern. Okay, so now when we run this, we should have a pattern drawn out based on the last five peaks that we have. You can see that here, one, two, three, four, five. So this pattern is drawn out, but it doesn't look like the patterns that we're interested in. So let's go ahead and figure out if it's the pattern that we're interested in. And that's if it has up, down, up, down. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna establish all of those price moves. So we're going to establish price move XA, AB, BC, and CD. And we're going to see if each one is positive or negative. So we'll do XA is equal to current pattern. And for all of these, I'm going to do the next value. So for XA, it's going to be value A, which is um, value 1. Okay. So minus current pattern 0. And let's go ahead and just copy this format, right? because it's going to be the same pretty much for the rest of them. So A, B, B, C, C, D. A, B, B, C, C, D. But for all these ones, we're just going to increment, we're going to imp increment by uh, one. So for this one, we're going to go current pattern two, the current pattern one, two, three, and then three, four. Okay. So if this pattern is uh, similar to the harmonic pattern, then we should be able to check. XA should be positive, AB should be negative, BC should be positive, and CD should be negative, or the other way around. So to do that, we're going to do if XA is greater than 0, and AB is less than 0, and BC greater than 0, and CD less than zero, okay? And so if that's true, we will plot the pattern. Um, but before we do that, we also want to plot the price values, but only with the price values that we're concerned with because we don't need to plot the whole thing. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to find the starting index. So the start index is going to be the minimum of current index and the end is going to be the maximum of the current index since the index just goes up. Uh, my auto finish thing is kind of slow right now. Okay, so now that we have these, what we can do is we can figure out the x values of the price pattern by doing numpy.arrange and we'll go from start all the way up to the iterator because the iterator is the last value that we're concerned with. And then we'll plot, again, for prices, start up to the iterator. And then we're plotting the current IDX and the current pattern. And so if we run this, we should find something that fits the general, like, up, down, up, down. Okay, and look at that. So we did find, find one. And if we keep closing this, you'll notice that it, it keeps finding this section as a pattern, or the next section. So as you can see, we're, we have a pattern finder now. So that is the next step um, in the process. So now that we have the pattern finder, what we're going to be interested in doing is seeing if it, the, the price retracements in the pattern fit the certain price retracements that we're interested in. Okay, and so that, that is uh, all the Fibonacci stuff with the different ratios. So we're going to be doing that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, 
I don't work too hard to make these videos, but you know, I, I appreciate that there's people watching and they think it's cool. Because I think it's cool, like any way that I can make money without really putting in a whole lot of effort is something that I want to do. So I hope you guys feel the same way. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, subscribe or leave a like and go check out my machine learning series that is also in progress right now. And I'll catch you guys next time.